Hello, this is just a quick video to show you the results of some experiments I've been running recently in order to vastly improve the dust extraction on my planar thicknesser machine. If you have one of these machines, you're definitely going to want to see this. Just to give you a bit of background, I recently upgraded from a one horsepower to a two horsepower HVLP extractor, and I set it up as a two stage system so that I could get away from changing bags and keep my new cartridge filter much cleaner for much longer. All the detail for that is in this video here, which I'll leave a link to in the description box. But if you watched that video, you'll know that when I was testing out the system at the end, the results were underwhelming and disappointing to say the least. Loads of chips were not being picked up by the extraction system when in planar mode but in thickness and mode, it performed okay. So in this video, I'm running a few tests to sort out this problem once and for all. Some of the comments on my previous video made me realize that the problem might not be with my extraction system, and they might be with the planar thickness itself. And let's start with a clean slate, so I'm vacuuming up any old chips. The last time I did this experiment, I had the fence set right at the back here, so this time, I'm gonna pull it forward and I've got the same block of wood that I used previously. And I'll run this through the planer three times. Still pretty terrible. I wondered if the shape of the cutter block was causing the chips to pass through this channel between each row of blades and fall down this gap rather than falling down here into the dust hood. But clearly moving the fence forward hasn't made any improvement. When the planar bed is lowered, there's a reasonable gap between the underside of this bed and this shroud around the cutter block. So I'm wondering if I can seal that up a little bit by adding some weather stripping to the underside of the planar bed. I gave it a good wipe down with some white spirit, let it dry and then applied some weather stripping. I also added some at the side here, right next to the cutter block. And I just want to make sure that it spins okay. So I can repeat the test now and my face might be a bit of a giveaway. Still a few chips on top, but that's to be expected with a planer, I think. But look at the difference there. As if solving the problem was that easy. I mean, there is still some fine dust and chips here, but nothing like the quantity that there was before. So clearly what was happening before was as the cutter block was spinning, chips were coming down these channels in between the rows of blades and falling through this gap here because the vast majority of chips were always on this back side. And I think also some chips would have been coming through over the top of this shroud and underneath the underside of the planar bed. But wow, what a difference. In thickness and mode, it still does an okay job. Obviously I'd like it to be much better than this, but I can live with it. There is one more experiment that I'd like to run in this video, actually. A lot of people mentioned that the airflow should increase significantly if I duct the extractor directly to the outside. So let's test that. I'm removing the flexi pipe between the motor and the filter. I'm not actually gonna run any ducting to the outside, but I'm gonna open up the window just so that air can escape from the room. Airflow readings were peaking at around 22.5 meters per second. The exhaust from the machine kicked up quite a lot of sawdust in the air, as you can see on my air quality monitor, so I quickly put on a respirator. I then installed the ducting again between the motor and the filter, and tested again, and the readings peaked at around 21.3. I felt like a few people might question my methods here, so I ended up taking the filter component down off the wall and ducting it outside and testing again, but the results were exactly the same. So what's that, like a 5% drop through adding the cartridge filter? Bearing in mind that the filter is very clean because it's new. But yeah, I don't think there's much to be gained by exhausting this outside at all based on that experiment. You'll see behind me that I have made a few slight changes to how I set up the system originally. So let me talk you through them now. This blast cake for the table saw was previously over here. So I extended this pipe here so that I could relocate it over here. A couple of people mentioned that this piece of flexi might be drastically reducing my airflow. So I ran some tests on that using the anemometer by plugging this up and seeing if it affected airflow at the other end. And actually it made no difference to airflow whatsoever. However, it did cause another problem. When using the planer, what was happening was a lot of the chips were coming to this junction here and then coming down this pipe and it was kind of backing up and just clogging all the way down here. And I kept having to swap the blast gates over just to clear this piece of pipework here. And that got annoying. So that's why I moved this blast gate over here because now it only has this short piece of pipe for it to back up into. 
I also noticed that I could smell dust every time the extractor was on, which was the same problem I had back when I was using the Charnwood one horsepower extractor. And that's why I ended up building a cabinet around it and adding another level of filtration. And when I turned on the extractor, I went around with a piece of tissue paper like this around the filter to see if I could find where air was leaking out from. And it was leaking out around this side here. Now I did mention in the previous video about extraction that I didn't like the way that this filter fitted so loosely onto this component here. And it seems like my concerns were not misplaced. So I ended up running some duct tape around where the weather stripping meets the filter and that has completely solved the problem. But yeah, that's definitely a design flaw for this extractor. I've also painted the wooden brackets white just to help them blend in with the wall and I've tidied everything up a little bit. So at this point, there's not much else I can do to improve the performance of this system other than upgrading to a three horsepower extractor, which I'm not going to do, removing the cyclone, which would increase performance by around 30%, which is what I worked out in the previous video. But for me, it's more important to retain the benefits that a cyclone offers. Ducting the system outside would only give me about a 5% increase in performance. Plus I'd be exhausting all of the warm air in the workshop outside, which isn't a great idea. The best option that I can see would be to upgrade the ductwork from four inches to five inches, possibly even six inches. But the problem with that is that the cheapest five inch cyclone I can find is about 400 pounds, which is absolutely extortionate in my opinion, considering it's just a thin cone shaped piece of metal. So to summarize, I'm gonna settle for what I've got here. It's a big improvement over what I had before and I'm pretty happy with it. Just in case you were wondering why I was using such a nice looking piece of timber for this experiment, Unfortunately, it's full of woodworm. I don't know if you can see that. So there we are. If you own this planer or you know anyone who owns this planer, and obviously it's not just this specific planer, there's loads of machines that all appear to be pretty much the same. Make sure you pick up some weather stripping. The stuff I used measures 10 millimeters thick. I'll leave a link in the description box to some of that stuff if you want to pick some up via the links in the description box. Thank you for watching. <laughs>